everyone, and welcome to Super Podcast Action Committee, episode 175. Andrew Eisen here, along with E. Zachary Knight. Hello, Zachary. Hello, Andrew. How are you guys? How are you doing today? Just fine. Uh, Laxer wants you to know that your Star Wars figures are crooked. Yeah, a couple of them are. We're actually packing, so we're we're getting ready to move, and mm. and so they're probably going to be put in a box over the next week. Uh, just move into a house that's closer to my work and a little bit bigger, so it'll yeah. be a yes, Matthew nice Kentia Hall. That's what it's called. Uh, before we started <laughs> the show, we were talk. I was talking about uh, if you are at E three, make sure you head over to what's called Kentia Hall, which is where a lot of uh, smaller organizations. Uh, Get Well Gamers has been over there. Uh, indie devs. Uh, there was a um, like a, uh, a classic games and arcade thing over there once. There's there was all kinds of neat uh, concept tech demos and, and weird stuff. So definitely all the big yeah. stuff is in the main hall. But definitely head on over there uh, and check it out. Anyway, uh, so yes, uh, podcast. Here we are. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm a bit scatterbrained because I'm working on IGN's guide for um, Lego Marvel's Avengers. And if you look at my uh, video game shelf, you will see every single Lego game there is except uh, Lego uh, Guitar Hero and Lego Dimensions. Because uh, Lego said, Rock Band, not Guitar uh, Hero. I'm sorry, Lego Rock Band and Lego um, Dimensions. Uh, dimensions because screw that toys to life crap um <laughs> so needless to say i am a big fan of uh lego games i find them and uh, really really fun to play uh but i find them incredibly uh frustrating because traveler's tale the developers uh behind the lego games uh do one of two things they either have no qa department and i i'm being serious Serious face. They either have no QA department or they don't give a damn about the stuff that QA finds. After 17, 18 <laughs> games, I, it's got to be that. They, they, they either don't test their games. Well, okay, if they didn't test their games, it probably wouldn't work at all. But, um, man, are these games buggy. And it... Oh. Yep. And they've it's, been buggy since the beginning. And yeah. Some some games are are worse than others. I, I think like the uh, uh, the first Indiana Jones game it was when they they first introduced uh, the dynamic screen splitting. Yeah. And uh, and that one had some. I, I think that was the first one that did that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that one had some really interesting bugs in it. And I, I haven't played any of the the newer ones, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I think the last ones I played were, or really played, was like the first Lego Batman, and uh, Lego Star Wars, the the complete series, you know, the the yeah. original trilogy one. Uh, th those are the two that I actually played the most, and I, I enjoyed them. You know, they're they're great. The Lego Indiana Jones, I, I they just. They they changed up a lot of things, and I just really couldn't get into it. You know, because uh, Lego Star Wars had uh, had the cantina that you w was your main hub between worlds. And, you know, Lego Batman had a uh, you know the Bat Cave was your your uh, your hub for the Batman side, and then some hideout for for or uh, Arkham Asylum was what it was for. Uh, on, on the villain side. So they have the really nice hubs that, that you could explore and, and uh, you know, connected all the worlds, but Lego Indiana Jones just kind of, they, they really changed the hub and you had to like hunt down the characters and vehicles that you unlock so you could purchase them mm -hmm. instead of, you know, just walking up to the computer or, or merchant or whatever and buying these characters, you know, that, that, that was really frustrating for me. And, and uh, so I kind of lost interest in the in lost interest in the Lego Indiana Jones game. My, uh, yeah, it, it's frustrating because I really genuinely enjoy the Lego games, um, and, and some of the bugs and glitches. I, I did a video called "The Bugs and Glitches of um, Lego Movie Video Game," uh, which is about a ten-minute video chronicling maybe a third <laughs> of the bugs that I found <laughs> in that game. Um, most of them are just kind of weird and are yeah. just stupid, but don't really um, it don't really hurt the game much. Uh, there there was one complete hardware lockup. 
Um, yeah. But man, Le Marvel Lego Marvel Avengers is one of the bad ones. First of all, this game suffers from some really, really bad design decisions. Um, yeah. Some of the environments are really difficult to read. Uh, I had to actually go to, I'm writing the guide and I had to go to game facts at one point to figure out what the hell I was supposed <laughs> to do because there was, um, who needs to write a guide? You can just copy game. Right, fact. Right. <laughs> I just copy paste game plaque, game facts. Uh, cause there was a, a twirl pole, one of those poles that sticks in the wall that you jump up and swing off of. Yeah. Um, but the, so the little bricks are hopping up and down on the ground, but since it's a twirl pole, it's only like two or three small little ones, which <laughs> are small little bricks that are behind a bunch of fire that are behind a railing, and the camera is doing this shake thing, so I couldn't find them. I'm like, and I saw the plug where the um, uh, twirl pole goes, and I, and I'm looking at him like, is there, because the camera's like looking directly at it, so I couldn't tell if there was actually a pole there or not. Uh -huh. And I kept trying to jump at it and falling into the fire and until I figured out that, oh, there are bricks behind the fire that I need to build with. Um, this game has some really awful problems with uh, when you stand in front of uh, computer consoles, sometimes they just ignore you. When yeah. you stand in front of it, the A button floats above your head, you hit the A button and nothing happens. And you keep having to move your character back and forth trying to get in just the right spot. <laughs> um, one of the, the it's scanning... The, uh, it's the 3D version of, uh, of finding the right pixel to click on in, in, in kind a of. game. Um, the game, as someone in the chat mentioned, that the, 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 uh, the characters feel floaty. They still do. That's never really bothered me too much. But the controls yeah. in this, this... What bothers me is how slippery they are. If they get anywhere near an edge, they'll just slide right off, which yeah. is annoying. Uh, and they've... Tra Traveler's Tales has never fixed that, and it boggles my mind. It's like, just glue me to an edge or something, because you just kind of get pulled off. It's well, weird. it's like yeah, they, they don't really need to glue you to the edge. They just need to, uh, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the term now. But basically, the the further you get on the edge, the faster you you slide and or make it gradual. That's what I. Uh, that's the term. I'm, you know, you get close to the edge and you just kind of slowly slide off. And then if you keep going, you'll go faster and faster. Stop yeah, making that would, rounded edges. I'm either yeah. off the edge or I'm not. You know how Mega Man just kind of do 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 do, and he's standing like with his toe on the end. Yeah, like he's either on the platform or he's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. In this game, I have had I've had to restart levels a couple of times because I got into one level and the switch character button stopped working, so I couldn't switch characters. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> I've had a I've had a hard lock. Uh, and I had to reset the now, entire console. Are you playing console. this on the Wii U or Wii U? Uh, okay. And I'm playing it on the Wii U instead of the PS3 because I can capture footage from the Wii U uh, because it doesn't have that uh, um, uh -huh. DCPH protocol or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, which you can get around, but I don't have the extra hardware to get around it, and I don't yeah. want to yeah. capture footage in uh, lower resolution it's, because it yeah. looks. Too yeah, so. with the the PS3, you have to get a uh, the the component cable uh, in order to mm -hmm. in which order to which I have, card. but I I was yeah. gonna do a video about a uh, Tomb Raider, and I captured some footage, and I looked at it, and it was just ugly as sin. So I'm like, I'm not bothering, you know. Uh, yeah. So congratulations, Sony, uh, in your efforts to stop us from pirating Blu-rays and DVDs. I guess you've lost sales. <laughs> because I would have bought it for the PS3 because you get free DLC, but I need to capture media, so I bought it for the Wii U. Um, at the very end of the game, uh, the credits roll. It does the post-credits thing where Thanos grabs the gauntlet out of the laundry machine or whatever. and says, oh, fine, I'll do it myself. And then it faded to black, and it never actually... Faded back. <laughs> and it never faded back. And that's my phone. Um, I'm not on call, so I don't really care. Uh, Matthew says so that you I, can bypass the HDCP with uh, an HDMI switcher. Yes, you can, but I don't have one. So, And I would need an extra HDMI cable, which I don't have. So, 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, so, yes, you can get around that. I'm not saying you can't get around it. You, you absolutely can. And as Matthew pointed out, with something as simple as, as the HDMI switcher, you just need a, uh, a, I forget, the a DCPH or something like that. It, it passes through, so you can uh, do it that way. Um, yeah. But uh, that's a piece of it's not expensive it's like a 20 dollar piece of hardware i guess but it's 20 dollars. i guess i could expense ign but i eh whatever um <laughs> so again i had to load the game from scratch i had to play through that level again and i had to sit through the credits again i was thinking oh please uh, until i finally got back <laughs> to the hub world oh it has been a nightmare i had one the footage from chapter one that i captured for some reason my video editor does not want to uh, display, even though I can play it in uh, uh, Windows Media Player. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. I tried to convert it to another file, and it failed after an hour and a half. Nice. So I uh, used a different converter to convert it, and that worked, and only it, it the sound was off, and it cut off like the last 10 minutes of the uh, video, so I had to go back into the level, play all the way through it, um, and uh, to get the last to get screenshots at the end of the level uh, uh -huh. one of the games i was playing through and it, it did a hard lock like towards the end of the level so i had to shut off my system reboot it, and play the entire level again to get back oh, yeah it's been so i was thinking i'll get five pages done today no man i got done one <laughs> nice yeah and there's uh someone else uh helping out uh, that that was mean. I'm sorry. Uh, th there's someone else filling in some of the page, writing some uh, guide stuff in the uh, IGN wiki, and I replaced all of it, at least all <laughs> all of the stuff on chapter one because it was just misspelled and grammatically incorrect in a lot of plays. And I really don't want to do that because this person's working hard to contribute and help out. And I'm hoping some of the subsequent pages have stuff I can actually use, but I have enough work to do. I don't want to edit someone else's stuff. I mean, if he actually, he or she manages to write some walkthrough stuff that is correct and I can proof, I'll just write all the stuff around it. But um, yeah, yeah. So at least this game only has 250 gold bricks to find, unlike previous games that have had uh, like 450, I think. <laughs> wow. uh, so, so. <sighs> yeah, it's kind of. Oh, the controls are terrible in this too, especially flying and vehicle controls. And oh, what's really? weird is sometimes the in other games it's fine, but I I was in the Manhattan hub and I hopped in a car and you you push the stick to the left and it goes womp right into a wall. I'm like, oh, come on. It is so not <laughs> worth getting in a car. Um, yeah. Flying is terrible because you, your character you, you say your character's flying here and there's like a stud here or a mini kit or something and you're like okay, over to the right a little bit womp. I'm like, come on! <sighs> You know, and driving and flying in bat in Lego Batman was fun. It worked. It's like, what did they do to break it I all? I imagine there's a, a couple different teams of travelers. To, they, they put out so many damn Lego games. Uh, yeah, I guess so. that they probably have two or three teams working at any given time. But you would think they would all have the same they engine to, need to work to off hire of. Hire more QA people and actually, because I'm not, I am a QA guy, but I'm not talking about really weird stuff that's hard to reproduce. I'm talking about really crap that no one You're could going... possibly miss. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, maybe it's just the the fact that they're. They they're basically a double license product product here. You know, you got the Lego license, and then you have whatever theme license it is, and so maybe they're treating it, you know, like, you know, since uh, you know normal licensed games, you know, like a, a movie tie-in game are typically rushed and and just spit out, and they don't QA those things worth a crap. They don't even design those games worth of crap. You know, maybe they're 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 saying, well, since this is a double licensed game, that means we only have to do half as much QA as a normal licensed game gets, which means no QA at all. <laughs> Either that or they they're like, well, we've got 20 of these games now. We they, we know how to do these. And it's like, guys, it's never worked. 
And no, uh, they, it's they, a test- there's always been bugs. It's and- a testament to just how fun these games are that I keep playing them. Uh, although I'm being paid to play through this one, um, I would have bought it anyway. Uh, yeah. But, oh man, so frustrating. Uh, someone said uh, probably not as buggy as Fallout. Yeah, I don't play Bethesda's games. Uh, one, because I don't like them. And two, because they are abominably buggy. Mm-hmm. I mean, now, I mean, I I, know not looking down at anyone who loves them. I mean, uh, people love their fallouts and Elder Scrolls. I think those games are incredibly boring. Uh, (laughs) And so I'm absolutely not willing to put up with the uh, my hair sticking up. I'm absolutely not worried about are not putting up with the bugs in those games when I don't enjoy the core game. Lego, I genuinely enjoy. I like beating the crap out of things that explode into studs and collecting monies. I love <laughs> that. That makes me happy. Um, yeah. Punching things and destroying them makes me happy. So, uh, some, so I'll put up with uh, yeah. some wonky design and bad controls. But it's not consistent. Some, some games, you'll run into bugs, but they play well. This one just doesn't play well it's it's got some bad design uh where the, the environment's just really hard to read uh some of the character controls is just absolutely terrible flying is terrible in those races where you fly through hoops yeah really 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 difficult to do it's not fun it's a chore because the flying controls are so crap hmm. so I wonder if it has something to do with the uh, with the analog stick. You know, perhaps you know, I you know, because I, I know that um, you know, like with the the PlayStation Three and the Xbox, you know, they have a variable uh, sensitivity on on the the analog stick. So, like you know, the the closest to the center, you know, typically don't don't adjust things too much. But the further out you get, you know, the the more the more direct and and obvious the the action is, and so perhaps perhaps there's a bug with the um, the way they designed that analog stick sensitivity for the Wii U, where it just completely ignores sensitivity and says, "Oh, you move the analog stick. We're going to go as far as we can in that direction." Yeah, mm-hmm. that that could be that could be what it is. You know, I, where, where they're I expecting would... a certain sensitivity, but for some reason they didn't design it with the way the Wii U handles it. I, yeah, I, I would have to yeah. play it on PS3 or another console to really tell, uh, Matthew jokes. Is it Superman 64 bad? No, it's actually, <laughs> no, unlike Superman 64, it's actually playable. Uh, yeah. new cube asked if I liked wonderful one Oh one. Yes. Yes, I did quite a lot. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there, but it, it's not, uh, Laxer saying, did they turn analog into digital input? Basically, no. Th- there is analog control. It's just the control is crap. Uh, yeah. Now, running a character around on the ground, fine. Uh, moving a character in the air in the levels is fine. The only problem is, is they they moving left and right. They just they boost too quickly, which makes it really difficult to finesse them into one area that they need to be outside in the main level. uh, It's really the up and down motion. That's just horrendous because you control up and down by holding, uh, I think a or a for down and B for up, but it's because, so it's digital. It's you're either holding the button or you're not. And so they'll, they'll do these sharp dives and inclines that you just don't need them to do. And so you'll try to feather it by tapping the button, but that will boost. Uh, There's other (laughs) weird design decisions like um, uh, X holding down the X button is uh, what brings up the character menu. So you can switch characters, but it's also the same button that transforms characters who can transform like uh, the Hulk uh, switching between banner and the Hulk. Uh, that is weird. There is also in the game something that I almost had to go check out a fact for, but I did figure it out. Um, you, you're in Tony. You're Tony Stark, not actual Iron Man suit, just Tony Stark. And I needed to blow something up, so I needed the uh, Iron Man suit. And I thought, oh, this must be a free play thing, something I have to come back for later. And then I couldn't find anything else to do in the level, and. 
I, for some reason, I held the X button. I'm like, oh, for Tony, if you hold the X button, he can summon his Iron Man suit. Could have used a tool tip on that because that's unique to this uh, to this game. Yeah, that, that it, is funny because there is a ton of tool tips and did you know little things that pop up? Too many, and some of the really important ones do not exist. Huh? You you would think that uh, transformation would be the uh, the the. Uh, the ability button, you know, like the the button that you would n normally use to use a character's special ability. Um, you would think that would be the transform button. Maybe. I mean, th that yeah. button does a. Uh, I, I think for Hulk, it does like a sonic clap, or uh, he pulls a big chunk of the ground out of the earth and throws it. Uh, so it, right. it it is used, but there's got to be a more eloquent there's a bunch of buttons on these controllers i'm sure they can find a yeah, more eloquent way to something. do it <laughs> because it's really annoying when cuz to get if you're playing hulk or banner and you want to get into the uh, menu to pick a new character you have to hold the button and wait through his admittedly really cute transformation and just kind of keep holding it so that it will go into the menu huh. um there's some others the uh the game does a good thing where the, the camera will pan over to something. You hit a button and the camera pan, you hit a button and the camera will pan over to what the button did. So you have an idea of where you're supposed to go and what you're going to do. The problem is, is it pans really super slow. <laughs> and then it pans all the way back to you. And you're like, I got it. I got it. Let me play the game. And uh, the boss battles are... There's literally a level in this game where the Hulk and Thor fight on the uh, helicarrier. And all you do is you watch pre-scripted cutscene of those two beating each other in the face. And when the Y button is floating above, you hammer on Y. And then it changes to B. Sometimes it changes <laughs> to A. I'm like, oh my god. And there's other places where uh, Black Widow jumps on a Chitari air scooter thing and starts smacking him in the head. And you're like, hammer on the button, yeah, beat this guy in the head and throw him off and drive away. And she's thump, 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 thump. I'm like, yeah, thump, 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 thump. I'm like, okay, thump, 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 thump. I'm like, any time now, thump, thump, thump. I'm like, come on. <laughs> like 25 <laughs> seconds of her. I, I, I thought the game was stuck. I don't know if they were going for a... <laughs> It's so long, it becomes funny. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Man. Some of the timing in this is just... It's the, there is so much stuff in this where I, I sit here going, did, did honestly nobody play this? Because the stuff I'm coming up with is stuff that you will notice simply by playing the game. I, I, I'm not doing weird things like trying to clip through walls and getting my character stuck. So. Yeah. Uh, Laxter says, so it's slow QTEs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, when you're... F the worst part, for me anyway, the worst part of every uh, Lego game is fighting. When henchmen storm the room and interrupt my game. I want to <laughs> smash stuff and collect studs and build things and and do things. I don't want to fight enemies. It's boring. They're just in my <laughs> way. Uh and in this game, it, usually in the games, you punch them once or twice and they explode and you go about your day. In this game, unless you're the Hulk, it takes like five or six hits to put every one of these dudes down. You do have special uh, superhero moves, uh, which mm -hmm. are these pre-canned animations that are cute, but they take too damn long. So you never. So it's quicker to just pummel them. Yeah, uh, you, you don't want to do the moves because they take too damn long. So, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, I've been ranting about this for 30 minutes, so maybe we should actually <laughs> move on to topics. Bit, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, after after the show, I'm going <sighs> to play yeah. some more Lego, Lego Marvel yeah. and write about it. And yeah, before we uh, move on, you know, I just want to say, oh, you know, please, I've been that... Uh, no, I, I've been watching uh, my kids, uh, my two older kids. Uh, my daughter, she's going to be turning 10 in a couple of weeks. and uh, or Actually, no, next week she'll be turning 10. And my son, he, he's 11. But uh, 
but they've been playing uh, DS and stuff. But I, I'm really impressed with my daughter. Uh, I, I have Radiant Historia for the DS, mm. and for about a year or so, she she uh, would load up my save and just kind of run around and fight monsters. Just kind of the whole novelty of the thing, I guess. You know, it was a different a game she's never played, and so she thought it was kind of neat. But this week, she actually started she started her uh, her own save file and has been playing it from the beginning, and and uh, she's actually doing really well. She's she's a uh, you know a, a good few hours into into the game and stuff. So I, I'm just like totally surprised that she picked up this game. It, it, you know, it's n- nothing like Minecraft. You know, it's nothing like uh, Zoo Tycoon, which is another game they've been playing lately. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like it's totally different from anything these kids have ever played, and and uh, I, I'm surprised. You know, I thought my son was going to be the one to to pick up that and play it, but yeah, he likes. Uh, the Lego games. He's got Lego battles on the, on the DS that he's been, he actually uh, unlocked everything in that game now. So he, he's really excited for that. Um, but uh, I, I've got a bunch of RPGs and stuff on, on my PS3 and that, that I bought PS1 classics and stuff. And I told her, you know, if you like radiant historia, you know, you should try out some of these games. And so we'll see, we'll see if I can get her to, to play some of that stuff too. But, uh, I, you know, that's just something I wanted to share because I thought it was really neat and, and stuff. Uh, you know, uh, my kids are picking up my legacy uh, while I myself have uh, I, this week, I finished installing everything that I have on Steam that installs on Linux. Everything that wasn't on, uh, didn't have a Linux installer on Steam, I downloaded from Humble Bundle and installed. And then I went and installed everything that I have from GOG, our good old games, uh, and installed all of those. So all in all, I think I have about 60 games on my computer now. So <laughs> I, I won't be hurting for games at any any point. So uh, lot, lots of fun stuff there, but yeah. So the chat is suggesting I edit the... Uh previous 20 minutes of me ranting about Lego uh, Marvel <laughs> Avengers into a separate YouTube video. Um, well, busy with the guide, so I don't have time to do that, but uh, maybe. Although, what, what, yeah. it's kind of a lame rant. I mean, I don't really raise my voice or curse. Yeah. But, you know, Um, and that's not the, and and Andrew has done that before where he's uh, taken a a cut out of the video or the the podcast mm -hmm. and posted it on its own because it was an interesting, uh, you know, interesting uh, uh, point of discussion. So, yeah. Uh, So before we move on, uh, comments appear to be working over on YouTube because, uh, and Nelly Sakiro says hi. So, hi. all right, so let us move on to our first topic after 35 minutes of show. Uh, oh, I, 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 I did flip the double bird. You're right, Laxter. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the poll for this week uh, is asked, has E3 lost its luster? Uh, well, let's, let's see what y'all thought. We had 95 people, uh, I'm sorry, 98 people vote. And um, let me get a better view on that. Hang on a sec. Do, 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 do. Refresh, and there we are. All right, so um, 98 people voted, and uh, 30% said a bit, yeah, it's just not as exciting as it used to be. Uh, 28%, uh, just two less people, said, heck no, I still look forward to it every year. <laughs> 19% said, yes, I used to love it, but now I struggle to work up any enthusiasm for it. Uh, 18%, so pretty much the one less person said, I never cared for it that much in the first place. And 5% said, kill it with fire. <laughs> uh, fairly uh, even five. split there. Yeah, um, it's, it's not, not too bad. It's that's a, about, it's, uh, that's it's about half, half, of the, half of the respondents saying either uh, I still look forward, or at least um, looking forward to E3, even if their excitement has been lessened recently, uh, mm-hmm. and about half who say, eh, yeah, do about it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, me, I, I love E3. Uh, it's it's like Christmas in early summer. Uh, I, I love it because I don't have to work it. I've done that once. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'll do that again. I mean, in, in, unless 
I, I don't know, unless IGN or someone hires me full time and sends my dumb ass to <laughs> E3. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I and I really genuinely enjoy it, and uh, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, it's just crass marketing," and we're all uh, uh, getting excited about big companies giving previews of things that we're going to buy later. And so, yeah, I know, but video games are fun. I look forward to playing them and seeing previews of what I'm going to play later is thrilling. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Um, well, and as far as, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and uh, you know, as far as E3 goes in general, it's, it's, it's not really a consumer event. It's never. It was never designed to be a consumer event. It was designed no. to be a a, a trade show marketing event. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you know, mm -hmm. retailers and uh, and retailers and publishers and stuff get together and say, these are the games we're making. Buy you know, you know, get ready to buy some uh, copies of this to sell. You know, that that kind of thing. You know, that's what E three was about. And then it went like super huge and now it's kind of a a uh, a weird chimera of trade show and consumer event at this mm -hmm. point so it's a very interesting life that e3's had over the last you know 20 years or so yeah although i i do of course complain whenever companies and uh it's usually the big publishers uh will preview games and show absolutely zero game footage uh, yeah, if if you've read some of my, thing. if you've read some of my uh, E3 press conference recaps uh, before, you'll know that I will notate every single time they show a game and don't show any actual gameplay. Um, uh, mm. For me personally, I cannot get excited about a game if you don't actually show me the game. Uh, maybe you can intrigue me with a new concept, um, but yeah. uh, for example, what's that? Uh, there's a PS4 game made by the Rare People, and it was this nicely animated video of some girl in a robot with a blue core, and it blows up. And yeah, yeah that recore. Um, yeah. I'm like, great, <laughs> great. That that's lovely. I don't care. I don't get how anyone can be excited because they showed nothing about the game. <laughs> now, Horizon well, Zero Dawn, which is kind of a dumb name, they actually yeah. showed some uh, woman taking down a mechanical T-Rex. I'm like, dude, awesome, Monster Hunter yeah. kind of thing. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm all, uh, I'm all for that. Uh, yeah. Recore actually looks, you know, you know, the, the concept of Recore. You know, it sounds like something that that I could play, but yeah, it, without at least what gameplay, we're speculating it will be. Yeah, you know, it, without the gameplay, you know, it's uh, you you can't really get a feel for if it's going to be fun or not. But the idea behind it, or at least what we think the idea behind it is, sounds really intriguing. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you know, I, and go ahead. Oh, Inafune is the uh, one of the people behind Recore. That's right. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, has E three lost its luster for me? No. Uh, I, in fact, uh, yeah, every year the, the technical improvements in the uh, internets uh, enable me to enjoy the, uh, enjoy it more and more. I, uh, streaming is, it keeps getting better and better. I get higher quality video, uh, Nintendo's presence at the show, uh, even though they're doing different things this year, uh, I have absolutely loved, uh, the Nintendo Treehouse live events that it's done, uh, for the past yeah. few years. I think that's, of course, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but I think that is just bar none, the best damn thing at E3 two years running. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a great thing because you know, with that, you know, not only do you get uh, you know developer interviews and stuff, you get actual, actual gameplay playthroughs of the, play game. the game. Yeah, you know, it's like, and you see, you see some really interesting ideas. Like, um, you know, that uh, the first year they did that, uh, um, I forget the developer who was doing it, but the they they had that gameplay demo concept of it was basically a tower defense game but it's like you had the security cameras and you mm -hmm. you had to switch between security cameras as you were fighting off these robots you know that you know that was really neat 
thing to watch. You know, it's like this is something we're experimenting with. Check it out. You know, that's really cool. You know, and then you get to see, uh, you know, uh, gameplay of of games that they're actually working towards completing. You know, when they did, uh, uh, they did a few, uh, you know. Uh, a good playthrough of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, that was really cool to see. Um, and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. I I really enjoy the Treehouse stuff. Yeah. Uh, Proto Man I, Dan I, says uh, he wouldn't have been interested in uh, Shin Megami Tensei across Fire Emblem if it weren't for the Treehouse demo. Uh, I, I would still be curious about the game, but I wouldn't be excited for it like I yeah. am now if it weren't for th them actually playing through the game and going, holy, wow, <laughs> this game looks awesome. Uh, yeah. 13U Cube asks, what color is my 3DS? Black. Um, <laughs> uh, Lyrical asks, isn't EA doing something different this year at E3? Uh, yes, uh, EA will not well. have a booth at E3. Instead, it's holding its own event uh, across the street. Yeah. From E3. They during E3. So it will still be at They're calling E3. it Ouya. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, Ouya did their still, event across the street. EA uh, Games will still have a presence at yeah. other booths. Uh, and, and, and they're EA still going to do their big press conference. Yes. So. yes they, but they will be hosting... Uh, it will be hosting its own event uh, literally across the street from the LA Convention Center during yeah. E3. So it'll still be there. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, well, so and, like Nintendo, yeah. uh, they're not yeah. doing the live conference. They're doing a digital event, which yeah. is fine by me. It, it keeps them from having technical issues. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. always fun. You know, when they when they do the tech when they have technical issues, it's like um, it, when Sony Sony was uh, uh, demonstrating that uh, some dragon game they had, and the sound just completely cut out. There was no sound whatsoever for the entire thing. Um, and, and then occasionally there'll be games that, that have trouble starting or will crash in the middle of it. That's always fun to watch. Yes, Skyward Sword. Um, That's what we're referring to as Skyward Sword. <laughs> yeah. Where but, poor Miyamoto's on stage. Going, huh? <laughs> because, <laughs> Would everyone mind turning off their wireless devices? I I, I know that's asking a lot, but um, yeah. But, but, uh, but oh, go ahead. Yeah, but you know, I but. You know, going back to the treehouse thing, I wish more companies would do something like that, where they actually broadcast a a multi hour, you know, gameplay thing. Because not everybody can go, you know, even not everybody even at E three can go to the booths and and sit in line and to play the demos there. You know, it'd be nice to be able to just you know have a, a few hour broadcast of of just people from the company just playing the games and talking about them because yeah. that's an experience you know us uh home viewers of e3 don't get to have we don't get to go to the booths we don't get to play the games you know so at least let somebody play them for us and broadcast yeah. that to us that would be awesome if everybody did that yeah. um, now that said it's not that I can't enjoy a trailer. For example, I think we all remember the uh, Dead Island trailer from years back. Uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the one that ran in reverse where it, there was a girl laying on the ground and she rised up and went through a window and yeah. then got her head hacked off in reverse. So moving backwards, you figured out it was a zombie invasion thingy. And it was a really cool commercial. It had absolutely nothing to do with the game. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember the jogging guy for Dead Island 2. I thought that was a cute trailer, too, but yeah, might have nothing to do with the game, with the game yeah. so who knows? <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, the other nice thing about a Nintendo digital event, rather than an actual live uh, press conference, is uh, you don't have technical errors, that's one. But I also don't have to worry about a stupid camera director deciding to cut away from the footage and show what the audience is doing. Yeah, that is Camera directors, so let me explain something to you. During a video game press conference, if there's video game footage on the screen, don't you dare cut away from that. I don't care what the audience is doing. I have absolutely no interest in seeing the audience's reaction. I can hear it. I wish I couldn't because I want to hear the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because that that is really annoying. Because you you're like you're you're watching this. You're like, oh, cool. What what's gonna happen here? And then it cuts to an audience, and you're like, seriously? 
I wanted to see what they were doing on the game. But yeah, don't cut away from the game. I'm 100% with you there. And it's like, and, and also, you know, if there's gameplay on there, don't even go to a wide shot of the stage. Yeah. I, you know, direct feed. Do direct not, feed. Don't, gi don't give me that push in crap onto the video screen. I don't, just cut the... <laughs> I'm more upset about that than I am about Lego Marvel. This that drives me nuts. Um, yeah. I'll yeah. sit in my chair. I'll be like, ah! <laughs> yeah. I, I watch but, these yeah. things alone. I'd probably be no fun watching these things with. Yeah. Well, I, I uh, you know, the the past few years since uh, since we started doing the 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 podcast, you know, we we do our big E three show at the end of the week, and that takes us like four hours to get through everything that we want to talk about. But it's like, you know, since since we started doing that, I've also started actually li watching the the broadcast live because prior to started doing the po the podcast, I would just catch the recaps and mm -hmm. and and everything because I you know I just wasn't that big into it. But I've had a lot of fun the past few years um, watching these things live and tweeting my thoughts out. You know, I, you know, I get a handful of people who interact with me and stuff, but uh, but still, you know, it's it's nice. You know, uh, it, it helps me to be engaged and and uh, you know share my thoughts as they come up. And and I've had you know I've had some interesting ex uh, thoughts and experiences uh, you know going through uh, things. But uh, but yeah, you know, a lot of it you know we we cover in the podcast and and everything, but. Uh, but you know, it's actually been fun, and I, I enjoy it. You know, I probably don't enjoy uh, E3 as much as I probably should or could. Um, you know, I, you know, I said you know that I my answer was a bit yeah. It's just not as exciting as it used to be. But really, it never was that exciting for me to begin with. Um, but uh, I guess you know, I I am a little more excited about it each year. Uh, I just wish there was more stuff like that. I, I wish PAX had more. Um, more things broadcast out, uh, you know, for the public who can't, who who miss the five minute window where you can actually buy tickets to packs, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, you know, it, it would be nice, you know, if more events did that kind of stuff, uh, live broadcasts and and things. But um, I think you know, this past year, the the uh, the 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 least interesting part of this past year was the PC broadcast where they, where they did that PC event. Yeah. And that one was just terrible. I, I liked it, it, but it was too long. I, I think they had the right idea. I think they really need to take some scissors to it. Those two. I, I didn't really like the format. I, I think the, the, um, the whole talk the, show, the thing? talk show format just didn't work for me. Okay. Um, you know, you know, had it, you know, if it was just a, you know, you know, give each developer like five or ten minutes to come on stage and talk up their game and show trailers or whatever, you know, I, I think that would have been fine. You know, just like five to ten minute presser events. Yeah, you know, I, I think that would have been fine for me. But the whole talk show thing just it, it just didn't work for me because I, I didn't find that part at all interesting and i thought the host was really annoying but <laughs> well yeah if you thought the host was annoying that would have killed the three-hour show for you so, yeah um, <laughs> um you uh we have some people arguing about which one's the most boring uh the, for me yeah. it's usually ea because yeah you know, i like they... a lot of ea games but me actually no i don't but uh <laughs> man the they... ea sports section oh yeah they, they oh, spend way too much time on that. Those are it's some like, of the worst parts of any press conference. I know. It's like, okay, so we know EA. You make a FIFA game. You make an NBA game. You make an, a Madden game. Just give me a sizzle reel of all your sports stuff and move on. <laughs> I don't need half an hour of you talking to uh, to the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, for it's like, just. Yeah. <laughs> I have to wonder, even for Pit now, I don't know who these people are. They bring in and this I think guy, and I'm like, I have no I, idea. I <laughs> but I wonder, do people who know who this is, the, this big sports star, do they care? I don't no, think I if I Weird Al Yankovic walked out on the stage, I, I'm a fan of Weird Al, but I'd be like, I'm not here for Weird Al. I'm here for video games. I love a good Weird Al song or an interview with the man. He's an interesting guy, but 
go away, Al. <laughs> unless you, well, unless you're hawking unless, your own video game, like yeah, uh, unless, uh, unless the, you have a, a, the a South Park game guys. designed by uh, Weird Al, keep Weird Al off the stage. But yeah, oh, uh, we have wait for uh, yeah, e, uh, thirteen U Cube talk uh, mentions microtransactions. You know, perhaps a, e, or perhaps EA is going to spend like half an hour talking about how their microtransactions are the the best thing in the world. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, Laxer, we yeah. If Weird Al did a game, yes, we would love to have him on stage to hawk it. But. Yeah, I mean, like uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, unless I got those names messed up. I think that's right. Yeah. They were on stage hawking uh, the Stick of Truth a couple years back, and they were great. They were yeah. funny. Because uh, yeah. they were making fun of Microsoft and, and their smart glass <laughs> thing at the time, which which was hilarious. Yeah. And, um, which uh, uh, Microsoft never did anything with. Uh, they didn't yeah. even release it. Uh, I well, don't think. I, I mean, it, Nintendo hasn't done anything with its quality of life initiative, whatever that was ever supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it is the NX. The NX is just something that helps you sleep. Yeah, the NX or, is going to be that that little uh, clip-on thing for the, your finger yeah, the, and, the, the, and uh, a CPAP machine. And, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and Nintendo's going into medical supplies and dialysis <laughs> machines and things. They're they're gamifying CPAPs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, <laughs> Let's, we should probably me, move on. We should, we should move on. Okay, so new topic. Uh, Sony, as we all know, tried to trademark Let's Play. I'll let you all facepalm or head desk if, as you need. And um, the USTPO. Uh, A PTO. Yeah. Patent and Trademark Office. Right. Said, uh, hey, there, someone else. Had, no, you probably can't do that because someone else has Let's Plays with a Z. Yeah. Or, uh, so th that might cause confusion. And everyone else on Earth was like, that's like the least of your worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, this is your story, so go ahead. What happened this week? Well, this week, uh, or well, I guess last week, uh, the MacArthur Law Firm, they... they uh, they they deal a lot with copyright issues and stuff for the games industry. They're they're a big games law firm, so not just copyright stuff, but also you know biz, uh, video game business uh, legal aid and stuff. But they they uh, they caught wind of of the whole let's play trademark thing and. And they decided to send a, a legal brief to uh, the USPTO and say, hey. Let's play is a generic term. Sony should not have it. And they they presented like thirty pieces of evidence uh, showing that Let's Play was genericized at this point, and uh, and then this so this past week, um, the MacArthur Law Firm uh, announced that uh, that the USPTO listened, you know, which is kind of strange for a government agency to actually listen to <laughs> to somebody, and uh, they rejected Sony's. Uh, trademark for a second time, and this time because it was generic. And they cited two pieces of evidence that uh, the MacArthur Law Firm uh, submitted. One was the Wikipedia page for Let's Play, and the other one was uh, our Let's Play on, on Reddit. And, um, and so the USPTO said, hey, these two things kind of show that this is a generic term and and nobody identifies it with Sony specifically um, and so they they slapped a big denied on it and and sent it back to Sony and Sony still has six months to uh, to respond and present evidence that that the term is not generic and I you know is specifically identified with Sony's brand but the MacArthur law firm and pretty much everybody else in the world still uh, feels that they're not even going to try, and if they try, they're going to fail at providing providing a convincing uh, argument for why they should hold a trademark on this, uh, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, so, hopefully, this is the end of the story. But, uh, <sighs> Axter says I didn't even know Sony had a Let's Play thing. Well, uh, well, they do. They up. have their um, the the well, PS4 it, has right. its uh, has it has the the ability to record gameplay footage and upload that. Mm -hmm. So my thoughts were that they were trying, you know, they were getting ready to launch an official product 
some let's play channel on YouTube or something where that footage goes to or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it, it just seems like you know it's one of those things that uh, Sony's just like, hey, we got this thing that we're working on, and a lawyer's like, have you trademarked that yet? And and then sent a trademark application in, and and even though. The, the lawyers are stupid and, and didn't bother to uh, to take five minutes to figure out if that term was actually trademarkable or not. <laughs> yes, I, I believe it's uh, called PS4 Shared Lyrical. It sounds yeah, like something it. like that. Yeah. <clears throat> but, and uh, Xbox One Microsoft has something had, Yeah, the Xbox too. One has pretty much the same thing. Uh, so, but yeah, I, it, it still boggles my mind that, that a Sony lawyer even bothered to, to submit this trade or trademark application and because this is probably the most mind-boggling and stupid of any trademark application I've ever seen coming from a a, a, a video game company you know this is worse than rather than a trademark troll yeah right yeah yeah but this is worse than uh, Bethesda's um, uh, scrolls uh, uh, trademark and and uh, candy crushes saga trademark that they you know they were going after it's like mm -hmm. it's like dude these are single words that everybody uses you can't trademark these things but this is sony taking something that is commonly used and has been in common use for nearly a decade and saying we think we should own this <laughs> it's like yeah. no you shouldn't and you're stupid for even thinking it <laughs> yes and proto mandana uh uh, King had uh, was going after candy too on its own, so yeah. But yeah, it's just you know the the thing with the uh, uh, King and Bethesda though was that they had a trademark on a much larger term, like it was Elder Scrolls and Candy Crush Saga. But they decided that those specific trademarks allowed them to to uh, lock in the individual words too, and and that's. You know that to me is a problem. You know the trademark does not give you r rights to the individual words, words just the, the phrase, right? The phrase it's uh, as a whole. Yeah, I made a YouTube video. One of the earliest YouTube videos I made was uh, making fun of that whole Bethesda trying to trademark scrolls. Uh, so I made a video uh, making uh, uh, post positing that uh, Bethesda was true. Well, it's parent company, Zenimax, was trying to uh, copyright the word the in the Elder Scrolls. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, my, my video was titled, or is titled the, which is probably a bad idea because it's hard to find on YouTube. <laughs> but um, So in, in the video, I'm receiving a cease and desist letter over the video that I'm currently in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it reads, uh, we own the, the Elder Scrolls, and that gives us uh, rights to every individual, yeah. not only every individual word in that phrase, but the individual letters in each word, too. So, uh, and it goes on. I, I sent that, before I did that video, I sent the script to a, a, a lawyer and I said, can, can you read this and help me legalize it up? And uh, he, he had a few suggestions, but he says, you know what, This I have actually seen crap like this before. <laughs> That's actually pretty close. Um, nice. So nice. Search, search YouTube for the, and maybe you'll, you'll find, maybe. Or Andrew just go to Ryzen Andrew's the, channel and look at his and video look, history yeah. and, and his it's uploads. It's one of the earliest ones. So. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. But, uh, uh, that, that does remind me of uh, uh, back, back in the day with the, um, I forget which Elder Scroll game it was, but uh, with the whole Fusro Da thing, um, you know, they, they, uh, they Zenimax went on a big uh, legal fit on Fusro Da because you know they 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 had they had Fusro Da in a couple of their early uh, trailers for the game, and that just started a whole meme. And it's like three months after the meme kind of lost its, you know, it, it went away. Nobody cared about the meme anymore. Uh, Zenimax decided that, hey, we own Fusro Da, and they started sending takedowns all over the place uh, for it. So that that was fun, too. Because um, it, it's just like, you know, nobody cares about this. I, you know, I, I wrote about it, and and I, I pulled up a... Uh, um, uh, I, I forget exactly what it was, but it was basically a search history on, on Google. 
and uh, and it showed you know the the popularity of Fusro Da, and it's like right around December, the turn of uh, the the turn of the year, the new year. Fusro Da just kind of drops, and nobody nobody cares anymore, and uh, so that was really cool. And then it's like that's when that's when Zenimax decided to care about it as their property. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, in other copyright claim uh, news, Nintendo still has not released its claim of uh, my video, Captain Toad headbutts Toad at the crotch. Uh, so uh, <laughs> they have until February 9th to respond. So mm, there's a good chance that Nintendo's just not going to do anything and I'll be able to release that video on the 9th, mm. which I would like to because... I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> so one more topic before we get out of here. Um, early access games are coming to good old games. Uh, good old games is calling this initiative games in development, which is, um, I think a lot more accurate as to what it really is. Yeah. Uh, compared to uh, steam Steam's early, early access. access. Yeah. access. Uh, because early access doesn't necessarily imply that the game is still in development or incomplete or missing features. It sounds like, oh, you, you just get to see it early. Like when you see a preview screening of Star Wars or whatever, yeah. it's usually the finished version of the film. Occasionally there is temp music. Occasionally there is, uh, sometimes they'll do unfinished visual cuts. effects. Unfinished yeah. visual effects, but typically, if you're a person in a mall taking a survey, that person with a clipboard comes up, "Hey, would you like to watch a movie?" Those are usually finished films. Now, occasionally, they they do get <coughs> recut or reshot after that, but yeah. they're usually uh, final versions at that point. But I, I like the game game <laughs> games in development. Oh well, all right. Uh, here's here's where it's unique. Is uh, one the games in development games are handpicked by good old games. And it offers a 14-day, no questions asked, return policy on all games sold through the Games and Development Service. Uh, so what that means is if you play the game and it doesn't work, or you think it sucks, you can refund it at any time within two weeks for any reason. Uh, also, apparently they have some type of uh, rollback feature, so uh, you can play any version of the game at any time. So yeah. if the developer makes a change that you don't like, well, you can just play the earlier version. Like if they go cropping a butt slap out or something, you can just <laughs> roll back to the earlier version and play that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, th we'll see how it ends, uh, how it turns out. But I yeah. think good old games. Uh, I think they've uh, thrown the gauntlet down. I I think this yeah, could I think be a decent competitor to uh, Steam. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, the uh, the fourteen day return policy is actually really good because uh, with Steam, I, I believe they uh, I believe they still apply their normal return policy to early uh, to early access games, where it's like you have fourteen weeks or two hours of gameplay uh, mm -hmm. before you know. It's like if you play the game for two hours you're stuck with it, whether you like it or not. It's whether that, that game crashed at two hours and 10 minutes and just would not load again. You know, it's like you're, you're stuck with it. You, you have to, you have to keep playing and you, you can't get your money back. Um, and so a full 14 days of, of testing out the, the bugs and, and seeing how the developer, um, yeah, seeing how the developer, uh, releases but or releases updates and stuff you know you, you know you can determine within two weeks that yeah you know, this developer is actually working on this game i think i'll stick out a stick stick to it at 14 days yeah sorry I, if i said weeks i didn't mean to um yeah, I, I missed it too sorry yeah but uh but yeah so so it, you know if a developer releases daily updates over that time you know you can kind of get a feel that that yes they're going to actually make this game and complete it but if they release like one update in those 14 days or the 13 days you know the first 13 days you can say on that 14th one you can say yeah i'm not going to keep this game cuz they're not releasing updates enough for me to 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 care um so I think that's the biggest thing. The, the hand picking the games, 
you know that, that that is a good thing because you have you know Gog uses a lot of a lot of uh, things that where it's like they have games that they've been watching under development, but they also have games that the the community has been requesting, mm-hmm. and uh, and they they look at those games and if the game is still under development and they have a lot of people requesting it, they're like, well, let's reach out to these guys and see if they want to take part in our games and development uh, process, and so that. That itself sets it apart from Steam, where Steam doesn't have any kind of uh, quality control or filters on early access. Anybody can release an early access game, mm-hmm. um, and and that itself has resulted in a lot of really garbage unhappy customers because they they buy a game. Uh, through early access, the developer re- releases a couple of updates, but then they go silent for six months or more, and yeah. nobody's happy in those kind of situations. Mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, to me, that's that's worse than a lot of the Kickstarter horror, horror stories you hear, um, because you know, with Kickstarter, you know the game isn't complete. You know the game is, sometimes the game hasn't even been started yet. But you know you're you're betting on the the future of that project. Where with early access, you take you purchase the game with the with the uh, the idea in mind that you're going to get regular updates and and be able to play the game consistently, you know, or until it's complete. But when they go silent, that's just yeah, that doesn't make people happy at all. So and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay. Um, that said, I, I do like that there is a place where anyone can put in the, can put out, put, can put their games out there. Uh, I, yeah. I, I do, I, I do like that, that aspect of it from, from a certain perspective. Granted that does have its own share of problems. Uh, so I do like that there are other places that take a more, uh, uh, selective or curated look at it. Yeah. Um, uh, Nintendo used to be, for example, extraordinarily stingy about what it would allow on its console, and then it, for good reason, <coughs> pedaled ba- uh, walked back on that and let almost anything on its console, and it seemed to walk back a bit too far in that direction. It's come forward a little bit, being a bit more discriminating with what it allows, while not being as overly restrictive as it has in the past. So I think for most, there's a happy medium. But again, I, I'm glad that there is actually a space where anyone can put their crap out there because yeah. someone's going to like it. Yeah, well, uh, but, you know, again, with with Steam Early Access, you still have to be greenlit before you can uh, release on Early Access. So there, there's that filter on there, but it's it's not as strong of a filter as... Gog itself saying, "We want this game, this game, and this game, but not these other games." Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, uh, good old game. Although you know, it's interesting. Uh, good old games has expanded its purview in recent years. Uh, it's it's not just good old games anymore. Yeah, they, they, there, they, there's a lot of new games, and, games yeah, and a lot, lot of, of indie games and a lot of uh, games yeah. from other. Uh, AAA developers too, but not not too many off of that front. But, yeah, yeah. You, so, uh, but that that's okay. Uh, so anyway, yeah. uh, I think that's where we'll, where we will call the show for the evening. Uh, we actually had a few more topics to discuss, but I spent the first uh, half of the show <laughs> complaining about Lego Marvel Avengers, <laughs> and I apologize for that. Yeah. So, um, uh. So Seems to me I'm forgetting something else, but uh, oh well. Uh, well, there's always next week. So let us plug yeah. our stuff and get out of here. Andrew Eisen here, E I S E N is how you spell the last name. Plug it into YouTube to find my uh, YouTube stuffs, of which I have a lot of things planned, but I'm busy with, uh, you know, when I'm not working on the guide, I'm working on game politics and I'm also working at my real job. So I don't really have a lot of time to do video editing. Uh, so there's, <laughs> you're probably not going to see anything from me other than super podcast action committee uh, until I've finished the Lego guide. So I apologize yeah. for that, but I do have some, hopefully some entertaining stuff. The, uh, the 
crotch headbutting video. I'm I'm hoping Nintendo will release its claim on, and you'll be able to see that in a couple of weeks. Um, so you know, fingers crossed. Uh, beyond that, uh, at Andrew Eisen is the Twitter. Uh, 13UCube asks, what's my real job again? I'm a uh, quality assurance analyst for a technology company. I uh, <coughs> We make our own proprietary hardware and software, and I'm the guy who tells the developers that they suck at their jobs. They love me. <laughs> so uh, yeah. they say, hey, uh, here here's the thing I've made. Uh, let me know if it works. And I say... What is it supposed to do? <laughs> do you have any specs? <laughs> nope. Okay. Andrew, how come you didn't tell me that the the light turns green when you hit the one button? I'm like, it, is it not supposed to do that? <laughs> I'm like, I hit the one button, light turns green. I'm like, I guess that's okay. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's constantly a challenge, but, um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm a quality assurance analyst for a technology company. I also do freelance writing, which is, uh, uh, the IGN, uh, guides. That's, that's part of it. Um, I don't get paid for game politics, but I, I do spend a lot of time, uh, uh, moderating and writing and, uh, trying to keep the site afloat because we have no money. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, let's see. Twitter was at Andrew Eisen. My Facebook page is Andrew Eisen YouTube. And um, yes, come come visit us on Game Politics. We're lonely. Yes. <laughs> so Zachary Paul. All right. You can follow me on Twitter at Easy Night. You can follow my game development work at DK underscore gaming on Twitter and just DivineNightGaming.com. And uh, I'm slowly working on a couple of games right now. Uh, one is a mobile game that I'm... I'm wishing would go a lot. The development would go uh, uh, a lot faster. Um, uh, Thirteen U Cube asks uh, how how Andrew and I met. Uh, that would be through game politics. Uh, we both were. Uh, Andrew started uh, back in the live journal days, and I came in uh, 2006, and you know was part of the community for a while, and then uh, started uh, comment moderating for uh, Dennis at the time. Uh, back in the Jack Thompson heydays, mm. um, and uh, and then yeah, we just you know we Andrew and I uh, you know just started chatting away uh, back then, and and then started the Super Podcast Action Committee a few years back with uh, James. So, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but I, I think I named it Podcast Action Committee because I thought the idea of having our own uh, uh, political pack. action committee, a pack, would be hilarious. I think Super was. Either the, your or James' idea. idea. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, that was idea. my idea because I, I wanted to uh, to throw on the super because right. of the super packs. Yeah, exactly. And, I'm, I'm like, and it, that's and it also, perfect. Yeah, and it also uh, um, brings to mind you know, like the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Although so, I, I really did, did, James had a bunch of his own suggestions, and my favorite was <laughs> a, a slime draws near. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it has really nothing to do with game politics. I just because the Dragon yeah. Quest is my favorite RPG, I just really loved that one. So yeah. um, anyway, uh, did you yeah. did you plug uh, everything? I, I didn't. Uh, yeah, and if you're interested in the Oklahoma game development uh, uh, side of things, uh, you can check out OK Game Devs on Twitter, and it's OKGameDev.com. Okay so uh, there you go. Oh, and if uh, you you want, uh, you know me to do more stuff on all of the various sites I do check out uh, patreon my patreon accounts uh, easy nights just search that but uh, yeah I would love some more money yes and it also helps to keep the site online because uh, you know I use the patreon and, uh, and an ad on game politics to help pay for server costs and the more money I get through patreon and those ads the the <clears throat> the better server I can buy for or rent for for the site to host on and and hopefully things would go be a lot smoother and stuff and so <laughs> so yes yep. support <laughs> yes Funny yeah man. and tell your friends about game politics because uh, you know if, if we can get more money coming in you know we could write more stuff and maybe pay hey. andrew <laughs> yeah uh, i'd i'd really what i'd really like to do is hire james back on full times to uh yes uh, to, uh, general manage the site just so he just so we can get back to having a solid eight to ten stories every single weekday uh right yeah. now we're 
<clears throat> two to five, I guess. I, I mean, yeah. we usually yeah. manage to get one or two a day, uh, but there are, yeah, ju there are just some when, days when, where we're all gone. Yeah, when when James is available all day, he'll usually get about a good five stories in. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, some days he's only available half the day, and other days he's just not available at all. Right. And Andrew and I both have uh, full time jobs, and so we'll try know, to we squeeze an article in during our lunch breaks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, we 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 try, and we want to get more stuff out there. Mm -hmm. So we'd we'd like know, to get we're... more content and a more consistent updating schedule because it it is really difficult, and we we love you guys because we're we're glad you guys put up with this because uh, we used to start updating usually about six a.m. through the early afternoon. Uh, now it's we if we can uh, sometimes we'll manage to write some stuff the night before and schedule it so that it does that but now yeah. it's like as, just write what you can when you can so you have articles popping up at odd times of the day which uh yeah um doesn't which help we need anything. to work on yeah uh, uh, yeah <laughs> we, we should schedule more stuff yeah. rather than just posting it instantly but uh, but sometimes you know you just have to post it instantly because you haven't had an update no in content four hours. Yeah, exactly yeah. but so. uh, on the bright side <laughs> our numbers are up um, yeah, they are. Uh, our our uh, Facebook has been actually doing really well uh, comparatively. Uh, so we've been getting uh, some movement and traction on Facebook. We've had uh, some stories on the site that have have hit pretty nicely. So uh, again, thank you guys for uh, sticking with us. I'm, I'm glad you are all there. Also, this show has had uh, about four or five more viewers than average in, in the past week, so that's great. Anyway, uh, you've been listening to Super Podcast Action Committee, episode 175. We uh, stream live at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Saturday night at GamePolitics.com. And you can send us an email at superpackpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at superpackpodcast. Subscribe and rate us on iTunes. We are back on iTunes. Every single show is on iTunes now. So, so sorry that took so damn long. <laughs> but um, all the shows are on iTunes, and uh, so subscribe and all that great stuff. Uh, also, Facebook, like us on Facebook. So we're out of here. Again, sorry for hijacking the first half of the show with my no, that's all right. rant on <laughs> Lego. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night.